Um, so yeah, uh, I just wanted to talk about the work that we've been doing on OpenShift. Um, so right now, OpenShift um, works with Jenkins, or Jenkins works with OpenShift um, with very limited changes if you have admin rights. And that is something that we wanted to modify. So we wanted to make Jenkins X work on OpenShift with very limited permissions. So imagine that you do have um, uh, permissions to create classified objects, you don't have permissions to, or you don't want even your controllers or the services running with it to have uh, classified permissions. So um, we really went through uh, amplification on how we create certain values or certain resources. And we tried to move away from creating like cluster wide roles, for example, cluster role bindings. And instead we're focusing more on creating um, namespaced roles in order to make the our services work uh, within the uh, namespace. So um, this came with a set of challenges. Uh, for example, um, certain things that we do in Jenkins X booth uh, require cluster wide permissions. For example, um, up upgrading the CRDs, um, many of the Helm charts that we were adding were actually creating the, the cluster wide permissions. So we had to modify that. And we also had to manage users. So um, what we did was we went through the uh, configuration values for certain Helm charts. And we set a few flags in order to make them avoid creating cluster wide permissions. And we created a certain set of um, other permissions that work in the namespace. So I want to uh, actually, I have a demo here so I can show. So I'll share my screen. Um, so can you see my screen? Okay. Yes. So the first thing is that uh, we will likely do this in two phases. So one phase, uh, for example, we will have a, an administration, an, an admin creating the, uh, the cluster for you or the cluster is already created. And the admin will need to execute certain uh, commands or execute certain actions in order to prepare the cluster for the actual Jenkins X boot installation. So in this case, um, we will ask the, the, the admin to actually execute this. So basically, uh, here, okay, this is basically the deal. Um, we will apply basically the, a few files that we will be providing. Uh, this will create the JX namespace, the JX staging and production namespace. Uh, it will create a few service accounts in the JX namespace. It will create the JX admin role, uh, which we will then assign into other um, OpenCV user. It also creates a, a security context for one of the of our controllers, and it also adds the Tecton CRDs and JX CRDs, because it's the only moment where we're going to be certain that we have the permissions to execute this. So after this is done, it's super fast. Um, okay, now we have another user which is not, is not going to be an admin. So uh, we just call JX demo. Um, now we're going to be adding the JX admin role into the JX demo user. So JX admin is basically, uh, it has all the necessary permissions. It basically it has admin permissions on just the Jenkins X namespaces. So we are doing this on every single namespace that we create. So JX, uh, JX staging and JX production, right? Now we have uh, this, and this role added to the uh, this user. So now we're going to switch to that user. So the OpenCV login. Yes, user. We switch um, context. So now we can check that we are with the correct user, which doesn't have permissions, for example, to get, uh, for example, if you get the Kubernetes get all, uh, all nice spaces. Um, you will see that you have permissions to place a bunch of things, which are um, cluster scoped or in different namespaces. So switch into the JX namespace. Uh, we will start the 
we will install Jenkins X now. So I already cloned the Jenkins X boot config. We're going to open it. And we will have to do a few modifications here. It should be already done for me. Yes. So we're, we changed the provider to OpenShift. Uh, we are going to be using Docker Hub as the registry. Um, we already have the main created for the cluster. So no need to, to have external DNS or anything like that create the domain for you. Um, we are going to be using root as a poster. It's basically the default for, for OpenShift. And, and that's, that's it, really. So these are the modifications that we need to do in there. So oh, one important one there. Uh, we have the new one, a new property called strict permissions, which basically let us know that we don't have to create or attempt to create the classified permissions. So we're going to be using the roles and role bindings for certain namespaces only. Um, so after this, another important modification that we have to do, uh, this is more a limitation that we have right now, is that we, don't, we can't really execute the boot steps conditionally. So in order to make this work for now, we have to manually delete certain uh, steps from the, boot, um, from the boot pipeline. Hopefully this will, not be, this will not be necessary in the future. Uh, right now, this is what we have. So for example, we don't want to execute the upgrade CRDs because we won't have the permissions to do so. Uh, we want to skip Valero too uh, because it installs some things that we are not going to have permissions to. Um, we don't need Nginx controller because we already have the domain created for OpenShift. Um, same for um, certain manager, external, uh, external DNS, everything. And well, what else? Um, this should be here. So we don't want to install anything from certain manager. So we get rid of it um, until here, yeah. So yeah, this is basically what we end up with. Uh, we've removed a few of these steps and now we're going to start booting. So um, yeah. this is going to be much quicker than a normal boot because we are skipping a few of these steps. But just so you can see um, what it looks like in the end. So we are now going to be booting. Is it big enough, by the way? Make it bigger anyway. Okay, so. I didn't do it right, so let's start again. Um, so yeah, it's going to ask for the user stuff when you're booting Jenkins X. So for example, the name of the cluster and everything, we're going to be using the name of the context. So let's wait a bit. Uh, yes, well, cluster name, username, username. Continue for a bit. We are not setting TLS. Uh, if you want to set up TLS, you can do it uh, when creating the cluster, because basically the, the domain is already being managed by OpenShift. So you can create the cert manager, and you can create a, uh, um, a certificate for it before actually running Jenkins X. So we are not going to manage it. We are not using any uh, storage for now, so we get directly into setting this up. So admin, this one. Now I will use my API key, but I will, I will delete it later, so no worries. And we want to use an external token registry. So we are going to set up the URL that we leave at the default for Docker Hub. Um, my username, my password. And now we set up this to work with Docker Hub. So now uh, it's going to continue creating things and installing Jenkins X. We're going to see certain configuration values now uh, when it attempts to install Jenkins X. So as we can see here, um, 
for certain things, for example, for Tecton, uh, we are telling it not to create the CRDs when installing the HAM chat because we already did it in the admin phase. So this way, the administrator can actually create, set up everything for us and we don't have to uh, recreate certain things that we would not have values for, I mean, uh, permissions for, right? Um, and the same happens with our back and cluster. We are said that we are telling you not to use the uh, cluster-wide permissions. And we're also doing the same for our own controllers. So for example, um, let me try to find it. Here, for example, we are telling it, okay, we enable the controller build, controller team, but there should be some configuration over here. So we are basically telling it not to use the cluster roles. Only right now, it's only this is only working for OpenShift, and when running with uh, cluster wide uh, non cluster wide permissions, we're also telling this uh, we're going to be using the controller role here, uh, because basically because what we would have with a normal admin cluster is that we have the cluster wide permissions, the cluster role bindings, so the user or Tecton bot in the JX namespace can actually install things in other class in other uh, namespaces because it has the admin rights. So what we are doing with the controller role is we are going to be copying the Tecton bot role over into other namespaces in order to um, to have the main service account in the JX namespace have the roles to um, deploy things in these namespaces. So. But for that, we need to copy the controller role, role into these namespaces in order to make it work. So, should be installing everything now. Let's see it here. Okay, now it's creating everything. Let's hope it doesn't take too long. So, that there is something that's um, hasn't been, hasn't made it into the, uh, the code base yet, and it's the creation of the environment role binding. So the environment role binding, for those that don't know it, is basically a CRD that we have in Jenkins X, which is basically what makes the uh, controller role actually work. So we're going to be telling it, okay, I want you to copy this role from, the, from this namespace into another namespace. So basically, we avoid creating cluster role bindings, and we just basically copy things over from one namespace to the other. And we can actually see it here. So it will look like something like this. So basically, we are, we are saying, OK, um, the service account is going to be the call TectonBot. It's in the JX namespace. The role that we want to copy over is TectonBot and we want to move it into the staging and production environment. So this should be done in a moment. But we can probably already see a few things. For example, if I do, um, well, I wouldn't be able to see it because in this user, for example, I cannot do this. So if I do QCT, I'll get um, cluster roles. I should have. I should have not been able to do this. But <laughs> cluster role bindings. Yeah, I don't have permissions to get any cluster role bindings, and I won't have permissions to create any cluster role bindings. So we won't have anything like a cluster role binding for any of our controllers or anything like that. So everything will be in the namespace. So now um, we can do something like we can do, check out the, the the logs from the controller role. Oh, let me open it here. Now it's not doing anything, but the moment we apply the environment role binding, something, and it's not not doing anything. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, Demo gods do not like me. Uh, but what this should have done is basically move the Tecton bot role over to the other namespaces, right? So that way we can actually run a quick start. And when it gets to a point where it has to 
uh, deploy the Helm chart into the staging environment, it will have the Tecton bot role over there. Um, it will be able to deploy it and you will be able to do a promotion to the production, et cetera, without any classified permissions. Oh, there you go. So basically it moved the role binding and the role to this nice basis. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, now, we are missing a very important feature, which are previews. Um, basically, because for each of the previews, we are creating a, a different namespace. So for example, you create a, a pull request and we create a namespace for that pull request in order to deploy the preview. Um, so that's obviously impossible if you are running in a cluster with very limited permissions because you won't have the permissions to create a namespace. So we are right now talking about different strategies to get past this, um, but, but we will basically come up with something with a design and, and make it work. But for now, previews are not working with it. Open and limited permissions. And that, that should be it. Any questions? No questions. Could you speak a little bit about um, your thoughts around the um, solutions for the preview environments um, in a restricted environment? Yeah, so right now we have, or we like to think we have three different alternatives, right? So there's one alternative which will be uh, letting the user create a different namespace. So create, a, for example, a JX preview namespace and basically run every single um, quick start in that namespace, or every single preview in that namespace, sorry. So that would mean that every single resource in the application's charts would need to be uh, made a template, basically because they will basically clash. Imagine that you have a hard-coded name for a, a custom, for a um, coffee map, uh, the, the moment you try to install the, the, the same health chart again, it will crash. So that would be a big limitation and, and we'll have to be super careful about that. Um, the other of the other things that we're considering is like having a pool of namespaces. For example, if you have 10 namespaces uh, that are going to be used for previews and that moment you open temple requests, they are going to be used. So uh, the next Pull request would have to wait for a namespace. The next preview will have to wait for a name for a namespace to basically to become free uh, by either just making the uh, the bill wait or making it pass, so, and and then you would be able to execute a command in order to create the preview in that namespace or, or to try again, right? Um, and the third one would be to just say, okay, uh, if you want namespaces in your cluster, um, the controller or whatever piece is basically uh, going to be creating the namespaces for you or for the cluster. We just need to have cluster-wide permissions. And if you want previews, you will need to give cluster-wide cluster -wide permissions to this controller. So uh, we are still debating about what the best alternative would be, but those are the three main uh, the science that we have. Does anybody on the call um, run a cluster at the moment that has limited um, permissions around namespace creation? Because um, some feedback on this would be brilliant. No? Okay, maybe not. Um, if anybody watches the video afterwards, um, like we're going to create a, an issue that we we can discuss stuff over, but um, if you'd like to follow up on either Slack or on the issue around it, it would be very valuable. Yeah, we would love to have some feedback on, on this because we know that the creation of nay spaces in restricted OpenSIF environments is usually uh, tricky because basically there's something that is very controlled. But we may be thinking that it's super hard to actually create namespaces or to give permissions to create namespaces and that the reality is that it's not that hard, you know. So um, we would like to have some feedback on that. 